If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. Both the Christian idolatry is using the word word as in John's logos, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 18, and the pagan world is using the same kind of lingo. So speaking of the church taking things out of context or appealing to our holy text and, you know, showing people your books say this and this, but not explaining the context with obscure sources, you know, you can lead people to believe anything. So I grew up with one of the leaders in the messianic movement today, one of the very, very big names. He actually trains people how to infiltrate Jewish communities. And how did he get to the stage? He got to the stage because he actually, he was interning under one of these big organizations and they sent him to infiltrate a Chabad yeshiva. So he went to a Chabad yeshiva and he learned how to read Hebrew. He learned what the Gemara is. He learned how to go through these different holy texts. And one of the books that he came across was the Tanya. So he discovered the concept of Seder Shtalshalis and Tzimtzum. And he came back and he brought this idea to the missionary community and he says, oh, this explains exactly what is happening in the right. prologue of John about the word becoming flesh. Any lie that succeeds has to have a little truth. If it doesn't have a little truth in it, it won't last. It has to gain traction. Look at the idea of a memra, right, of the logos. Um, so it, it actually is a real thing. But unfortunately, many, many religions abuse this, exploit this, because people are not familiar with what this means. You have to listen very carefully. The Torah tells us when HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the universe, how did he do it? What did he do? So in the third verse of the entire Torah, we're told how Hashem made the world. And God said, let there be light. So how did Hashem create light? And remember, light, water always existed. This is an interesting thing, that water was never created, or it's, it's completely primordial. And in fact, scientists know today that water does not come from this universe, does not come from this planet at all. So in the verse, I'm just as a caveat, you see how the Torah is so accurate, water was always there. At the end of verse 2, we see, that the Spirit of Hashem hovered over the face of the waters. Now, whatever that means, waters are there. There's, God's going to separate the waters, but water was always there. And scientists now discover what the Torah always knew. So Hashem now is creating light, which is the first thing. Why is light important? Because without light, we know, based on a physicist uh, in the early 20th century, that without light, you don't have time. They're intimately connected. But how did he do it? Vayoymer Elohim, and God said. So therefore, HaKadosh Baruch Hu uttered the word or, and from that Hebrew word emerged light, whatever light is. Okay, The sun, incidentally, is not going to be created until the fourth day. So light is created long before HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the sun. Okay, That's very important. That's how Hashem, so Hashem uttered the word, or, and light came from it. And that word is very common in Tanakh. In Aramaic, the word is memra, or it's called devar in Hebrew. Like Jeremiah uttered a devar, a word of prophecy, famously in Jeremiah 29, verse 10, which corresponds to the famous Daniel chapter 9. That's what Tanya is talking about. Now, when Tanya is speaking about it, you don't need Tanya. Like, it's not like Tanya invented a new religion. It's not like the Baal HaTanya, like he made up his own Judaism 
What really is happening is that we are finite. God has many attributes, and at times these attributes of God seem to be competing with each other. They don't seem to be compatible. And in the Torah, we see that, in fact, God has all these features, and these facets of God are ways for us to understand the one true God. There is no oneness like God. But as human beings, we see God is judge, is, is, has judgment. We see that God is merciful. If you'll ask me later, what do those really mean? We'll talk about it. But right there. Now, do Christians expect? exploit this element that there are features of God just as we apprehend it. It's not, in fact, that God is chas anything. Einoid bilvadoi. There's no one else besides him. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35 through 39. But from our vantage point, sometimes we see something. It looks like a bad thing, but it's really a a very good thing, and these are different facets of God. But I want to get to this idea, which you refer to as the Logos. HaKadosh Baruch Hu uttered a word, and from that word came creation. Hashem didn't need a screwdriver and a hammer to make things. He uttered the word, and from that, that's why it's Lush and Kodesh. That's why, of course, if you speak English, if you can only speak English, Make sure you pray in English because you want to know what you're talking about. But really, it's important to learn Lushen Kodesh because when you say a word in Hebrew, your mom is creating things. Both the Christian idolatry is using the word word as in John's Logos, John chapter 1, verse 1 through 18. And the pagan world is using the same kind of lingo. But when we say things came through the word to the world through its word, that means Hashem uttered the word. It's not inferior. On the contrary, but in the pagan world, it meant it's an inferior thing. That's why the idea of a resurrection of the dead was crazy to the ancient world. They would they thought the Jews were nuts. A caveat: the Greco-Roman world respected the Jews. They really respected us. They had admired us for reasons that are beyond the scope of the conversation. But the one thing that drove them nuts is why we would think we should resurrect from the dead. We know that actually the body is a beautiful thing, is a holy thing. But what we're trying to do, in just like if you take a piece of wood, oak wood, and you make a barrel from it, and you pour oil into it, fragrance into it, perfume into it, you pour wine into it, what happens to this oak barrel? It then absorbs the fragrance of the wine and the perfume. You understand? So the, the, the wood then takes on special property in the same way our body's like a dog, like a cat. But we have a neshama, and if we live our lives in the proper way, uh, then our physical bodies become holy, and therefore the resurrection of the dead is a necessity. We're not resurrecting from the dead because we get to come back to the party. That's the immature way of looking at it. The resurrection of the dead is necessary because our bodies has become infused. That's the whole answer. If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. אזי מלך, אזי מלך שמו נקרא ואחרי כפלות הכל לבדו ימלוך נועד